As the Money Burns is an original podcast by Nikki Woodard. Based on historical research, this is a deep exploration into what happened to a set of actual heirs and heiresses to some of America's most famous fortunes when the Great Depression hits. Each episode has three primary sections. Section one is a narrative story. Section two goes deeper into the historical facts. Section three focuses on contemporary, emotional, and personal connections. Story recap. Huntington Hartford's secret marriage is no longer a secret, and Prince Sergio Belinsky gives up his royal title and becomes an American citizen. Now back to As the Money Burns. The Artist Touch. Many marvel at several stunning new murals created by a famous painter for the opening of a grand hotel with an old familiar name. Forewarning, I will have trouble with several pronunciations, but will do my best. Section 1. Story. Nineteen thirty one Paris. Large canvases circle around a Parisian workshop. Day to day, a small painter works from one to another in various stages of similar paintings in progress. He adds a hint of color there, then matches in another. Reconsider one figure's detail to then adjust another figure on a different one. Strokes of layers and paint fill in and form into images. Overall, 15 murals come to life in little over a year's time. They tell of familiar scenes from Miguel de Cervantes' Don Quixote. Boxers, acrobatics, tightrope walkers, the largest canvas shows the marriage of Quitiera and Camacho. The panels are beautiful, rich in color, both monochromatic and yet vivid. The layering of color in various shades and hues. Burgundy, dark reddish browns, black, cream, and white gold, though there is a silver cast overall. Serret has perfected the art form known as grisaille, also seen in the future of Picasso's Guernica, 1937. As the name indicates, grisaille is heavily reliant on gray and grayish tones, though another color might similarly be layered in shades and hues, though might have another term like brunel for brown or verdile for green. The overall resulting effect resembles more of a sculpture or underpainting. Sert takes this artistic technique and elevates the effect with metallic glitter colors, including golden tones. Sert fiddles with a few more touches, then steps back, satisfied enough. He plops his paintbrush into a small tin of water. Fini. Finished. His young wife exuding sexual energy, Princess Rusi Divani, applauds the new creations along with his former first wife, once a beauty in her own right, but now older and dowdier, Misia. But they aren't the only ones excited to see what the painter has created. Back in March 1931, King Alfonso XIII of Spain visits to watch Sert paint and review up close another commission in progress for the Palacio Libia owned by the Duke of Alba. Those murals featured different aspects of the Alba family dating back to the 14th century. A bittersweet moment as darkness looms over the Spanish king who soon abdicates his throne that April. July 1931 Paris a more celebratory visit occurs when in-laws Prince Alexis Divani and Princess Louis Van Allen Divani arrive. Sert and Rusi host a lavish party for the newlyweds. Rusi showers her new sister-in-law and very wealthy heiress, Prince Louise, with attention. Prince Alexis proudly shows off his new stylish wardrobe, expensive watches, and rich wife. Over the next few weeks, several small crowds and parties gather to marvel over the new Sert murals at the studio. The whimsy and artistic incarnations from the literary work dance over the panels. Critics, collectors, and the public alike salivate at the magnitude. Sert's speed, precision, detail, and multiplicity are impressive. As quickly as the paintings are finished, they are wrapped up for shipment. The commission works to be sent to their new home, in New York City. 
The murals will be installed into one dining room at the brand new Waldorf Astoria on Park Avenue. Originally to be referred as the Rose Room, the room will quickly bear the name the Sack Room for decades to come. A place for fine dining and dancing and where many future stars will make their debuts and performances, including Little Cabina Wright, Jr. October 1st, 1931. After a private celebration the night before with an early peak, the Waldorf Astoria officially opens its door at its new location. Headlines and ads for the new hotel splash across several national and international newspapers. 2,000 people gather in the Grand Ballroom to listen to a radio address. From the White House, President Hoover's broadcast praises the opening of the Grand Hotel as a mark of progress, growth, and hope for the future. Hoover himself will later visit the hotel in 1933 for his farewell speech and likes the hotel so much he will live there for the next 30 years. Along with the Regal murals and mosaics in the Park Avenue foyer, the Sert murals quickly become one of the most celebrated attractions and alleviates any lingering quarrels over the use of non-American artists. Sert's dramatic, opulent, and Goya-esque designs receive much praise. One newspaper features another Sert-in-law, the Princess Divani, actress Mae Murray, dining in front of one of the Waldorf Astoria's new Sert murals. Over in Texas, a nearly bankrupt hotelier prepares to lose another hotel. The aftermath of the Wall Street crash has not been good for him. He has already lost three of his eight hotels, with more soon to fail. When he opens the newspaper and sees an announcement for the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, now located on Park Avenue in New York City. And yet, at this moment, the disheartened young businessman finds hope. He cuts out the ad and places it in his wallet. He vows to own that exact hotel one day. And one day, he will. Almost two decades later, he gains first management, then eventually all rights, and his son will eventually buy the land rights under the hotel. A later photo features the businessman, now older, under a canopy entrance with the reference to this served room. That man is Conrad Hilton. Section 2, History and Historiography The more things change, the more they stay the same. History has its cycles as people change, develop, and yet somehow repeat past, present, and future patterns. The Waldorf Astoria definitely follows that tradition. In May 1929, the original Waldorf Astoria closed its doors. It was built during a feud between a man considering himself to be the new head of the family dynasty, William Waldorf Astor, and his famous socialite queen bee, Aunt Lena, also known as Caroline Astor. Their side-by-side -side brownstones torn down to build two separate competing hotels, the Waldorf on Willie's side in 1893, and the Astoria on Caroline's in 1897. The hotels are joined as the rift is mended between the two cousins, Willie and Caroline's son Jack, a.k.a. Colonel John Jacob Astor IV, who died the richest man on the Titanic, and is the father of Vincent Astor, Princess Alice Ava Astor Obolinsky, and Jakey, John Jacob Astor VI. The Astor family would sell later the hotel to the manager, George Bolt. The colonel would continue building other hotels, later owned by his son Vincent and managed by son-in-law, Prince Serge Obolinsky. For nearly 30 years, the Waldorf Astoria and its German Renaissance design served as a center for elites. But in the latter decade with Prohibition and more luxury hotel competition, including by the Astors, its dated style went out of vogue and the doors closed. The name Waldorf Astoria was then sentimentally sold to then-manager Lucius Boomer, for a dollar. Almost as soon as the announcement of the final closing, a surge in interest escalated and plans for a new building began. Boomer comes out of retirement to build and manage the next one. As the original location and buildings are torn down for the Empire State Building, over off Park Avenue, construction begins for the new Waldorf Astoria in an Art Deco style. Much care and thought are put into the new hotel like the old one. 
and architect Leonard Schultz goes abroad to recruit talent for parts of the hotel. He is criticized for not hiring more Americans, but Schultz instead opts to commission one person considered to be the best interwar period artist, none other than Spanish painter José María Sert, who lives in Paris. By 1931, Sert is one of the most famous painters in the world and considered one of the two best at murals. We have mentioned him a few times before as he is the husband of Prince Alexis Divani's sister, Princess Rusi Divani. The beautiful, enigmatic, and cunning Princess Rusi Divani is an artist and sculptress in her own right. But where she is a true master is in sculpting the destiny of her brother, Prince Alexis. Mesmerizing and magnetic, Rusi casts a spell over the Divani in-laws. Even Sert's first wife, Missia Sert, fell in love with her and stepped aside, giving Rusi the marital bed. In 1927, Sert and Missia divorced to the disapproval of their circle, as Missia is a much-beloved muse, patron, and friend to artists, including Coco Chanel. Sert then marries Rusi at the Hague in 1928. However, Sert, Rusi, and Missia continue living in an odd menage a trois situation. At the time of our immediate story, Rusi's youngest brother, Alexis, has recently married Louise Astor Van Allen, the great-granddaughter of Caroline Astor and cousin to the other Astors previously mentioned. As I have noted, I have been developing this story over several years and configuring who is who to tell the larger tale and the importance and relevance to each other. I was struck by one article that describes several elite locations, but randomly gave all the signifiers needed as to who should be kept in mind as these tales unwind and entangle yet again. The Atlanta Constitution, in its August 12, 1934, Who's Who and Why and Where column, describes several socialites and associated hotspots relevant to our ongoing characters within this series. In Newport, there are the Dukes, Van Allens, Astors, and Vanderbilts. On to Southampton and Palm Beach with Hutton's and Marjorie Merriweather Post, Stotesbury's, more Vanderbilts, and particular mention of the Cosden Playa Oriente with its Cirque murals, and now owned by Anna Dodge Dillman. Then on to Bar Harbor with even more Vanderbilts, Rockefellers, and Fords. A list of notably wealthy families, and then the artist Sert highlighted catches my attention, especially knowing his marital connections. Hint, for those new to these stories, there will be more connections in the nearest future created by a scandal orchestrated by Rusi, but that is saved for later in our timeline. Sert was born in Barcelona, Spain in 1874. He would study art in Rome and eventually settle in Paris. He befriends many of the famous painters of his era, including Salvador Dali. In 1900, Sert is commissioned to paint the interior murals of the Vic Cathedral, which took nearly 30 years to complete. Hit with a multitude of delays and setbacks, the original commission deadline ran out and gets extended over and over. In July 1936, during the Spanish Civil War, Fire will destroy parts of the cathedral, including his works. Sert will return to restore the paintings throughout World War II and for the rest of his life. Meanwhile, he paints a multitude of other works that gain him more popularity. By 1910, Sert focuses more on murals. He's designed several sets for Russian Sergei Diaghilev and the Ballet Russes in Paris. By 1924, Sert is so popular he receives a few commissions for private homes in America and a special exhibition at the Wildenstein Galleries. During the exhibition's trip, Sert and his then-wife, Missia, are feted for 10 days in the United States. The exhibition features several of Sert's works, the cartoon tapestries designed for the King Alfonso XIII of Spain, along with a few more samples from other projects for Baron Edmund de Rothschild and Sir Philip Sassoon and lastly, a set of nine mural panels featuring Sinbad the Sailor. Joshua Cosden hires Sert to create the Sinbad the Sailor panels for the Palm Beach mansion known as Playa Oriente. During the period of our stories, Playa Oriente is owned by wealthy widow and recently remarried Anna Dodge Dillman. Sert produces many works in his native Spain, as well as Europe and occasionally America. Forewarning, I will have trouble with several pronunciations, but will do my best. Additional Sert works in his native Catalonia include 1908, the Lost Steps Hall of Barcelona Courthouse, 1910, Ballroom at the Residence of Marquis of Aiella on La Rambla, 1917, Allegories of World War I for Charles Deering at his Maricel de Sitges Palace, 
1927, Paintings of Catalan Theme for Frances Combo Home in Barcelona. 1929, Barcelona City Council's Chronicles Hall. 1933, two panels on Spanish Moor subjects for Raúl Rovarata and his Santa Clotilde de Loret de Mar estate. Outside of Catalonia, some of Sert's works include 1920, Dining Room of the Maurices of Salmonica in Madrid, Dresser of Queen Victoria Eugenia in the Magdalena Palace in Santander, and Baron de Rothschild in Chantilly. 1922, The Honor Ladder at the Duchess of Elchigen Palace, 1924, Maurice Wendell Salon, the Trent Park Ballroom of Sir Philip Sassoon, Cosden Mansion, Playa Oriente, and nine panels for Harry Phipps in Pittsburgh. 1932, the Oratory of the Lyria Palace for the Dukes of Alba. 1934, the Walls of the Convent of the San Telmo Church in Donostia, San Sebastian. In 1935, the Venice Palace of Prince Alexis Divani. 1935 to 1936, the Council Chamber of the League of Nations in Geneva, the walls and ceilings with themes of war and peace, progress of humanity, justice, and international law. 1937, a 16 by 41 foot American progress at Rockefeller Center, replacing the Diego Rivera's prior mural, which prominently featured linen in the center, and that Rivera refused to remove despite John Rockefeller Jr. and Nelson Rockefeller's request. 1942, financier Joan March's residence in Madrid. 1944, financier Joan March's Palace Palma, which features elements of the Spanish Civil War glorifying Franco's defense of the palace. Shortly before the October 29, 1929 Wall Street crash, Sert is commissioned to paint the future Waldorf Astoria Hotel murals for a rumored six-figure salary. They will become a draw for the hotel so popular the Sert Room is named for them. Unfortunately, during the hotel's 1972 remodeling, the murals are removed and sold to an old Catalan industrial bank known as Bank Union in Spain. In 1982, that bank then went bankrupt. When I first went down the trail of trying to currently locate the 15 panels two years ago, it seemed as though the murals had been lost. However, a more recent search yielded delightful results. After purchasing the Sert panels, Bank Union housed them in the El Sucre building in Vic, and upon bankruptcy, Hispanic American Bank bought the works and moved them to the Giad Grupa Santander in Bodilla del Monte. They are now located and displayed in Banco Santander Foundation, links included in the notes section. Once celebrated far and wide and much sought after, Serret's artistic touch will soon quickly fade from memory and into relative oblivion to most of the world. Still, like a voice whispering from the past, art is the one thing that can last long beyond the life of the artist and their patrons, yet remnants still linger on, ever so often reappearing and reminding us that life without art can be rather dull. But the art of life is something much harder to master, and like an underpainting, so many shades and layers are left to be revealed beneath the surface. Despite life's complications, several of our heirs and heiresses will gather impressive art collections during their lifetimes. But as the Robert Frost poem says, nothing gold can stay. Will they, too, inevitably fade from memory? Section 3, Contemporary and Personal Relevance An artist's touch is valued for what they can make us see on the surface and for what we feel deep inside. Only that touch, once so brilliant, can also fade away, or worse, if seen used for the wrong ends, be turned against and intentionally erased. And so with all this talk about the back then popular and seemingly prolific painter Sert, a question arises as to why we know so little about him now. One, his style of painting, which was more traditional, incorporated realism with using photography to study details and perspective, and a highly decorative style that fell out of favor with post-war critics wanting more abstract and modern, innovative techniques. For the rest of his relatively short life, Sert remains firmly committed to his art form, despite the contemporary changes. Another reason, Sert attracts a lot of attention, which also comes with envy and scrutiny. While personally he could lean a little conservative, as expected of his Catalan industrial gentry upbringing, he is also very cosmopolitan and accepting of broad culture. 
This means he had a somewhat controversial and charismatic persona for the era. Definitely, his unconventional lifestyle with Missy and Rusi causes a stir. Thirdly, another cert will also rise in prominence and overshadow in modern thought. His nephew, famous architect, city planner, and former dean of Harvard Graduate School of Design, Jose Luis Cert. And lastly, and likely even more influential, it might come down to a semi-cancel culture type reaction to the painter Cert's later years. Cert's popularity means many people and institutions courted and praised his work. Not really showing high political or ideological attachments, Sert worked openly for whichever buyer came along. He accepted the changes in regimes, which for 20th century Spain meant some fairly drastic changes. When the monarchy is in power, Sert would be a monarchist. Several articles detail his relationship with the last Spanish king, Alfonso XIII. When Spain became a republic, Sert is Republican, and in his last years, he is a Francoist during Francisco Franco's regime. The latter association now heaps moral objections towards the artist. The truth is, likely, Sert wanted to continue to paint, and he might have been more pragmatic about the circumstances rather than sticking with ideological dogma. The destruction of the Vic and the murder of several of his friends would also likely impact his views and need for security. His later life focuses on restoring the Cathedral of Vic, which was heavily destroyed by the 1930 Spanish Civil War. Very attached to this legacy, Sert will continue work on this up to the end of his life in 1945. Oh, how quickly brilliance can dim and go back into the darkness. Our heirs and heiresses are shining brightly, but only for so long. As the Great Depression lingers on, everyone gets pulled into the shadows, and things are only going to get worse. There's just so much history that seems to be lost and so much art left to explore. I would like to recommend two YouTube channels I find ever delightful. Links will be available in the notes section and transcripts. Forgotten Lives features 12 to 15 minute videos on a variety of interesting subjects, including various royals, wealthy socialites, so many delightful tales from around the world in revisiting the familiar and unfamiliar. Most recently, they have featured episodes on Barbara Hutton, Doris Duke, Marjorie Merriweather Post, and Alva Vanderbilt. Recently, I discovered another YouTube channel, Art Deco, which explains the art history and dynamics of other famous paintings and works of art in 8 to 12 minutes. Little twisted details and motives that make these artworks come alive in a whole new way. Once again, those YouTube channels are Forgotten Lives and Art Deco. Please see the social media for As the Money Burns for the photos of Conrad Hilton and Mae Murray. If you enjoy As the Money Burns, then please share, like, and subscribe. Next, when we return to As the Money Burns, money can lead to dangerous outcomes. A generous gift one year leads to a triple homicide decades later. Until then. As the Money Burns is an original podcast written, produced, and voiced by Nikki Woodard based on historical research. Archival music has been provided by Past Perfect Vintage Music. Check out their website at www.pastperfect.com. Please come visit us at As the Money Burns via Good Pods, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Transcripts, timeline, episode guide, and character bios are available at asthemoneyburns.com.